This is talk number four, Nick Flakes in production, what, why, and how. And our presenter is Alexander Bantiv. I hope I am saying that properly. If I am not, I apologize. So the topic of this talk is um, Alexander's experience using Nick Flakes in production at the company Sirocco. They've been using Nix there for over five years, and they've just started their internal effort to use Flakes in build infrastructure and projects. This talk is going to have a refresher on what Flakes are also. So if you've been confused by them, here's your chance to learn and have explained why Flakes are so promising and you know, just sharing general experiences and advice on the matter. Oh, and I did forget the announcement. I forgot to um, say thank you um, <laughs> properly in the chat to like Gabriel last talk. And also you don't have to put ones if you are non-binary, you can put hexadecimals because the binary doesn't apply to you. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Uh, hi, I'm Alexander, and I write Nix at Sirocco. Uh, once again, because of uh, some GT issues, I you won't be able to see my face, but that's probably for the better. Um, so, um, uh, we lately we have started switching to Flakes, uh, switching our production system pipelines to Flakes, and I would like to explain why we do that and uh, how we do that. So. You can find sources for this talk at uh, this URL. It will go public uh, after I finish the talk. Uh, I encourage you to build this and follow it along by yourself. Uh, so for a quick rem reminder, what are those flakes again? Well, uh, flakes were proposed by uh, Ilko Dolstra uh, in RFC 49. The RFC is currently with the drone, but uh, nevertheless, the work on flakes is ongoing in Nix master branch, and hopefully uh, the RFC will be resubmitted soon. Uh, so, okay, but what are they? A flake is basically a directory that contains a flake.nix flake .nix file at the root. That's it. The repository that this talk is built from is a flake. Nix packages is a flake. Nix itself is a flake. Flakes also tend to contain a flake.logs file in them. So, for example, um, uh, yeah, this presentation is a flake. Uh, what's in those files? Flake.nix file uh, is a simple Nix file that contains uh, an attribute set. The notable attributes are description, inputs, and outputs. Uh, I'll explain what those means uh, later in the talk. Flake.log is a JSON file that pins all the versions of the inputs. Uh, now that you have uh, hopefully been reminded about what flakes are, uh, and you hopefully understand about uh, at least something about them, uh, I would like to explain uh, why we use them in production. Uh, first, let's take a look at uh, what we need from our production build systems. First of all, we need our production build systems to be reproducible. That means that two people building the same project should get approximately the same results. Uh, we need our production, si our build system to be easy to use, uh, which means that people who have little experience with Nix should be uh, able to easily at least build the project and run it. And we need uh, our build system to be cross-platform because our developers use all three major OSs and we need to support all of them. So to understand why we are so excited about Flakes, let's take a look at the alternatives. We'll use a simplified version of this talk's Nix expression as an example. First alternative is channels. Uh, channels are a very simple idea. You have a separate command called Nix channel. It uh, downloads and unpacks tarballs uh, somewhere in your Nix path. Uh, the benefits are quite obvious. Uh, you, have, you have a very um, easy way to write standalone Nix expressions using Angular bracket syntax, so import Nix packages. Uh, this will give you uh, well, the Nix packages uh, dependency. You you, it's very easy to update dependencies using Nix, flight, Nix channel update, and uh, it's very easy to override dependencies uh, by uh, changing Nix path environment variable. The drawbacks are quite obvious as well. Uh, Nix channel is stateful uh, because every user has to run Nix channel add before they can build your project. Uh, channels are not composable uh, because channels can depend on other channels, and the channels are not reproducible at all because unless you jump through some hoops, your users will get different versions of dependencies than you. Second alternative is pinning with fetch turbo. Uh, the idea is quite simple as well. You use the built-in fetch turbo function uh, that uh, Nix, uh, and Nix will fetch that turbo that you spe specify in URL uh, at evaluation time, and then you can use it uh, as usual, for example, with imports. The benefits are that this is somewhat reproducible. 
because you have to specify the uh, you can specify the git revision uh, and uh, the uh, hash of the tarball it's somewhat composable because your dependencies can use the same mechanism to fetch their dependencies and it's stateless your users don't have to run any comments other than nix build the drawbacks are that it's quite cumbersome. You have to manually get the commit versions, you have to manually get the, the hashes, and uh, to update uh, them, you need to manually edit the default.nix file or, or wherever you have uh, those arguments, wherever you have specified those arguments. A third alternative is NIF. Uh, NIF uh, was created by Enmatia, and it promises easy dependency management for Nix projects, and it does deliver on that promise. We have switched most of our projects to use NIF before we started experimenting with Flakes, and that wasn't any time wasted because transitioning from NIF to Flakes is easier than tra transitioning from flex channels to Flakes. Uh, the benefits are that it's once again reproducible, composable, and stateless. Uh, however, unlike uh, fetch tarball, it's also very easy to update dependencies using the NIF command, and it's easy to override dependencies. The only drawback is that it requires a separate tool, uh, which uh, d doesn't uh, integrate into other Nix. Uh, mm, commands uh, too well. Actually, all of those uh, approaches have a set of common drawbacks. First of all, lack of standard structure. There is no standard format for default.nix, meaning that every project implements uh, their own. I have seen a default.nix with a single derivation, an other set of derivations, a list of derivations, uh, and, uh, and so on. And so it's not very easy to use because your users have to guess uh, which uh, format your, your project uses. Uh, second drawback is extreme reliance on Nix packages. Uh, many of the uh, old uh, sort of Nix commands somehow implicitly rely on Nix packages. For example, Nix shell. This is bad for projects that simply ca can't be added to Nix packages, uh, or that uh, don't use don't use Nix packages, or the the projects that want to use a custom Nix packages version. Uh, there is no simple way to enforce hermetic evaluation because uh, both fetch tarball and if some are somewhat reproducible but uh, they don't enforce reproducibility you can still import from imperial locations use angle bracket syntax etc and finally there is no integration with the rest of nix uh, because there is no e easy way to for example overwrite inputs from nix command directly this is again not very easy to use uh, well, as you might have guessed, Flakes solve all of these problems. They impose a standard structure on Flake.nix, remove any reliance on Nix packages and tooling, at least mostly, enforce hermetic evaluation by removing Nix path and built-in current system, among other things, and integrate tightly with other Nix tooling. Uh, let's take a, a look at a, an example of a simple Flake. There's quite a lot happening in, in this file, and we'll get to back to what everything means exactly later in the talk. For now, note that we specify inputs by describing their locations, but not their versions. So here we describe uh, the location from which we want to fetch Nix packages. Um, and um, that outputs depend on inputs. So here outputs depends on the input Nix packages. Also note that we never use built-in current system and instead we map over all of the platforms exported by Nix packages. I'll explain uh, how to do this a bit later as well. Uh, updating and overriding is very easy using the uh, update input and override input command line uh, flags to that all mo almost all Nix commands accept now. With flakes comes a new uh, Nix command line interface. Uh, it is uh, also, uh, in my opinion, it is more concise and it is definitely more uniform. Now all of the Nix commands accept the same format of arguments. A flake reference, and they also share a lot of common flags, unlike the old interface. Old interface is still kept for compatibility. Uh, flake also, flakes also introduce flake references. Uh, flake references are uh, sim dramatically simplify uh, fetching remote projects. So, for example, instead of writing this monstrosity, we can now just tell needs this simple location, and it will do what you would expect. It will fetch uh, the this uh, repository from uh, this host and open a shell with the default package of it. Uh, so to reiterate, uh, Flake solve many problems that we were facing with Nix, uh, which is why we have decided uh, to use them for many of our projects. Now that you are hopefully about as excited about Flakes as we are, I would like to explain how you can use them in your current uh, projects and in integrate them into your current infrastructure. 
First of all, in order to manage uh, flakes, you will have to, to use a recent enough Nix. The easiest way to get uh, such a version of Nix is to use Nix shell p unstable, uh, p, p Nix unstable, which will fetch a, a pre-built Nix version. So you don't actually have to build anything. You can. I also encourage you to read Ilko's blog posts on the matter. He explains uh, in a, in a lot more detail the decisions that were put into flakes and uh, some other things, uh, and uh, they are gr great read. Uh, there is quite a lot of information about flakes on the web, but I haven't found much advice on how to actually write on or integrate flakes into already existing projects. I would like to remedy that by explaining what everything means in a flake and sharing my experiences of flakeifying our infrastructure. Let's start by initializing our first flake. To do that, we will create a new directory and run Nix flake in it. In, in it. Uh, Nix flake init is a command that places a skeleton flake.nix file in current directory, uh, so it doesn't do anything fancy. Uh, then we create a new Git repository and uh, add everything to index. I'll explain why that is important a bit in a bit. Let's take a look at uh, the skeleton file that Nix placed uh, in our uh, new directory. Uh, description is pretty obvious. It's just a string, string describing the current flake. Uh, outputs is a function uh, which uh, returns as an attribute set of well outputs. Um, there are some standard outputs for example both both packages and default package are standard but you may also provide your own uh, argument of outputs is an attribute set of inputs self is always an input and it refers to this very flake that nix is currently evaluating nix packages here is an indirect input meaning its value is taken from a flake registry and not from inputs uh, attribute of this flake don't worry about it uh, too much for now Uh, as you can see, all of the flake outputs, for example, legacy packages is an output of Nix packages, are available as top level attributes of those inputs. So Nix packages dot legacy packages is an output of Nix packages. Um, you can also access other flake attributes such as description or inputs, uh, and uh, also some flakes provide some information about their source. Uh, if you cast any flake input to a string, it will return the path to that flake's source from which it was evaluated. Now let's take a closer look at this, this line of outputs. Uh, packages is an output which is an attribute set where attribute names are um, systems and um, attribute values are uh, attribute sets in, in on themselves, but where uh, attribute sets of derivations. So let me say that again. Packages is an uh, attribute set where attribute names are platforms or systems and attribute values are attribute sets of derivations. Uh, legacy packages is an output designed specifically for Nix packages. Uh, it um, It's an attribute set of, uh, once again, where attribute names are platforms or system, but attribute values are arbitrary uh, attribute sets. This allows us to stuff the, the entire Nix packages into this output. Uh, default package is an output which is an attribute set uh, of uh, derivations uh, and names are once again uh, systems or platforms. Uh, and uh, here we set the default package for x86 64 Linux to the output we have defined one line earlier. So self.packages.x86 64 Linux dot hello uh, is, um, uh, well, it's exactly this. And x doesn't do any fancy uh, not tying here. Now that uh, we hopefully understand what everything means in a flake.nix file, it's time to use it. Uh, let's for, First of all, let's build the default package for the current platform. To do that, we can just run nix build. The first time we run nix build, nix will fetch all of the dependencies that we have specified in inputs and uh, pin their versions in flake.log file. It also warns us that the git tree is dirty, meaning that uh, other people won't be able to easily reproduce our results. Uh, we can also specify the default package for the current platform explicitly using flake references. So dot is uh, the URL, uh, then hash, and then we can specify any output we like. Uh, if we run the result in binary, it outputs hello world as expected. We can also use Nix shell to, uh, to get ourselves a shell with uh, the binary in path. Uh, it once again, when called without arguments, it will 
uh, drop us in a shell with default package for current platform, but we can also run it with any arguments. And now we can just run hello because uh, the binary is in path. Now let's examine our flake. Um, now let's examine our flake. Uh, we can use uh, nix flake list inputs command to list uh, to tell nix to list all of the inputs of our flake. Uh, in our case, this is just our flake has just one input. It's nix packages, and uh, as you can see, nix tells us uh, exactly the version, the Git revision of nix packages we're using. Uh, you can also run nix flake show, uh, which uh, will out, which uh, will show uh, all of the outputs of the current flake. So here, our flake has two outputs: default package and packages. Now let's improve our flake by providing outputs for all systems instead of just x86, 64 Linux. As you can remember, uh, we have um, we have specified x86, 64 Linux here explicitly, which means that currently our flake doesn't uh, provide outputs for other systems. Uh, to do that, we will use built-in map patterns function to map over all of the available systems in Nix packages legacy packages. Uh, for every such system, we will, we will return an attribute set uh, where hello will be equal to a hello from that package from package set for that particular system. Default package uh, is uh, very similar. We once again use map address function, but this time we map over uh, the packages output of this flake, uh, and uh, for every uh, per platform package set, uh, which uh, for, for every pl per, per platform package set, we choose hello from that package set, which we have defined here. So this means that default package for every platform is equal to hello uh, output for every hello package for that particular platform. Um, sorry. Uh, now let's uh, try building our flake, uh, try building our package for another platform. To do that, we will run a nix build command, but this time we will explicitly specify that we want to build hello package for x86 64 Darwin. Uh, and quite surprisingly, it builds. Uh, that's because uh, Hydra actually pre, pre builds a lot of packages for Darwin, and they are available for download on cache.nixos.org. So nix just substitutes uh, that binary instead of building it. But obviously, if we try to run it, we get an exact format error that signifies that we're uh, trying to run a binary for a different platform. So it works. Now let's add a runnable application. Applications are, in, are a feature introduced by Flakes. Um, they are implemented with apps and default app outputs, uh, which are similar to packages and default package correspondingly. Uh, both of them are once again similar to packages and default package, but instead of derivations, they have attribute sets of form type equals app and program equals to the executable you want to run. So here we, we define default app uh, by mapping over all of the uh, platforms or well packages uh, exported by default package. And for every platform, we run the executable for the platform uh, as a program. To run, uh, to run Flake applications, you use the nix run command. Uh, and if we do this here, it just outputs hello world, just as we would expect. Uh, now let's add a test. Uh, here I will add an inline bash test, but obviously you should use the test suite provided by your actual language. Uh, here I, I will map over all of the legacy, all of the package set in legacy packages and for every platform, uh, I will uh, use run command uh, function to uh, run some bash. And in that bash, we basically just execute the hello package from this current flake for the system that we're currently checking for and uh, compare the output to hello world, which uh, we expect. To check, uh, we need to run next flake check. Uh, but if we run it without any flags, we won't see any output uh, because by default, Nix hides all of the output. Uh, if we run it with a, an L flag, uh, it will show us the successful output. So it tells us that, that hello output is hello world and it expected hello world, which matches. Now let's break it and try to check. So we just replace the expected output with an incorrect one and run Nix flag check again. And now it fails just as we, as we would hope. Now let's package a local application instead of re-exporting one from Nix packages. To, uh, I'll package a simple Haskell application. I won't go over into what happens, happens on the Haskell side. It's pretty simple. It just prints hello world. 
Okay, yeah, I for some reason I am talking quite slowly now. Um, uh, I guess I'll skip the unimportant parts. So this is a very simple call packageable expression. Uh, it's uh, it just takes two argument as TDNF and GHC, and um, it uh, uses MK derivation to sim to quite simply build uh, the package using GHC with no fancy cabal or anything. Uh, so it's uh, it should be quite easy to understand. Changes to flag.nix are very trivial as well. We just replace packages.hello with packages.callpackage, hello.nix, uh, and uh, no overrides. Uh, and if we try to build it, it doesn't work for some reason. Why is that? Well, remember I told you that it's important to add everything to git index. That's why. Uh, be because before evaluating a flake, Nix copies its content to Nix store, and uh, it also removes ev everything that's not in uh, git index. Uh, so if we add everything to git index and then try building again, uh, now it works. And uh, if we try to run in our application, it uh, outputs hello world just we have expected and Nix run also works. Nix like check will break because GHC is not available for some platforms and uh, for some complicated reasons, which I won't go into here. So Nix like check will fail now. Um, Let's now add an overlay because providing a buildable derivation is nice, but providing an overlay that can be used with any Nix packages version is even nicer. Overlays is an output which is an attribute set of overlays and overlay is an output which is just one, one overlay. Uh, overlays are, function of, are functions of two arguments, final and previous. Uh, please uh, note that here in Flakes, Nix actually enforces that the arguments are called final and previous. And here we just overlay a, a simple, a very simple override with uh, set hello in the particular package set to the hello.nix, uh, to call package hello.nix from the current directory. Uh, let's also ship a NixOS module with our application. Uh, this is a very simple NixOS module. It just provides two, two, two options and a systemd one shot service, which just runs our hello application. Um, Importing it into flake.nix is pretty trivial as well. NixOS modules is an output which is an attribute set of, well, NixOS modules. And here we uh, set the hello NixOS module of this flake to uh, module.nix. Now let's add a, sorry, what, what was that? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, now let's add a version flag. Uh, I won't go into changes in the Haskell side again, but uh, note that it takes a, it takes an environmental variable called version at build time and uses that uh, as a version output. Changes to Nix uh, to, to Nix build inside are very trivial too. We just pass it a version environment variable here. Changes to Flake to Nix are a bit more interesting. Here we use the fact that Flake inputs actually provide more uh, attributes than just outputs. For example, all Git, uh, flake, Git flakes uh, provide revision uh, attribute when they are uh, not dirty and last modified date when they are dirty. So here we, so here we provide, um, uh, so, so here we set the version to be uh, hello and then the, either the revision or last modified date of this flake and next packages and with either the revision or last modified date of uh, Nix packages. And uh, obviously, um, um, and obviously now if we try it, it uh, actually work, works first time. Um, it tells us that hello was last modified on October the 7th, uh, 2020 and that Nix packages is this revision. It tells us the date here because remember that we haven't committed anything to Git yet. Let's do that, by the way. Uh, now we commit everything to Git and uh, push our uh, current repository to somewhere, uh, to some hosting. Uh, this basically meant that we have just published our first flake. We can now use flake references to uh, just as we, uh, to do everything we have done locally, but uh, now remotely. So for example, if we want to uh, run the application that we have exported, we can ju just use Nix run and then um, pass it the flake reference uh, to which we have uh, pushed our uh, flake. If you don't want to publish your repo, you can just try Nix run GitHub Balsoft Hello Flake. Uh, it contains all of the files that I have discussed earlier. 
But wait, you might say, unstable Nix is not an option for CI developers. Uh, that's true, but uh, worry not, Ilko has a solution for you. It's called Flake Compat. F uh, you can put this very simple Nix expression in default.nix file. Uh, it actually just fetches the latest version of Flake Compat and then calls it with, uh, uh, with the SRC argument of the current Flake. Uh, this has the result that now we can use old Nix versions, so for example, 2.3.7, uh, to build our Flake. Some features like Flake applications won't be available and you can't manage uh, the inputs, but uh, that's uh, at least something you can uh, easily tell your users or CI to do. Uh, now let's deploy our application. This is a fairly uh, common situation for software companies. Uh, where you are developing an open source project and you want to deploy it to your servers. Obviously, including server definitions in the project would be a bad idea because other people may have their own deployments and they obviously will have their own serv server definitions. So let's create a new uh, project or repository with infrastructure for our Flake. Uh, we just initialize a new Git repository. We won't do Nix Flake init this time because we will write our own Nix Flake from scratch. And uh, let's go over uh, what I have written here. Description is once again a very simple description of the current flake. Inputs, uh, we haven't encountered this before, so I'll go over what happens here. Inputs.hello.url is an, uh, an UR a URL from which, uh, git, from which Nix will fetch the flake. Uh, here I just set it to the URL to which we have published our flake earlier. Uh, this line, inputs.hello.inputs.nixpackages.follows, tells Nix to substitute whatever version um, hello flake, uh, whatever version of Nix packages hello flake uh, has in its log file uh, with uh, what with the Nix packages version that this infrastructure flake is using. This allows us to reduce the uh, the amount of Nix packages version uh, we depend on, but at the same time it removes some of the reproducibility. You can also specify flake equals true, but this is the default. If you specified flake equals false here, Nix wouldn't interpret uh, the hello flake as a flake, and it uh, will just give you the path to the source. This is useful for dependent on projects that aren't flakes yet. Now let's write our server definition. We'll start with a simple shim because we will be running our server in a NixOS container, and uh, NixOS containers don't need any bootloaders or file systems. So here, uh, I just set the, both of those to dummy values so that NixOS configuration, NixOS evaluation succeeds. Now let's look at our flake.nix. Here we use an NixOS configuration output, which is a, an, obviously an attribute set of NixOS configurations. We set the hello NixOS configuration to the output of Nix package sleep NixOS system, which is a function that builds a NixOS configuration from some modules. We tell that NixOS system that we we will be building an x86 64 Linux NixOS uh, system, and uh, we also pass it a list of modules. Modules has the same semantics as inputs in your configuration.nix file. Uh, here we will pass it three modules. First of all, the NixOS modules hello, which we have defined in our in our hello flake. Uh, we also pass it the shim.nix, which we have defined earlier. And we also pass it an attribute set, which contains an overlay from our hello flake. And uh, it also enables the service from our, which we have defined in our NixOS module in the hello flake. Uh, now let's try it in a NixOS container. To do that, you will need a recent enough version of NixOS container that understands flakes. You can get that with using Nix shell, Nix packages, hash NixOS container. You can then use a sudo NixOS container create uh, and pass it a flake argument. Uh, this is a flake reference, so current directory and output of hello. This will actually resolve to Nixos configurations hello, And we name our container hello. If you want to update the configuration, you just replace create with update here. Now you can start the container. Uh, for reasons unrelated to flake, it, to flakes, it will hang uh, during boot, but uh, you can just ignore that. Just kill it after five to 10 seconds um, and uh, you can move on. You can then run sudo nixos container root login hello to get a root shell inside the container. Inside the container, you can restart the service to make sure that uh, it actually outputs something and then uh, look at the logs for this service using journal control. And as you can see uh, here, it actually does output hello world to the standard output, which is great. It means that our deployment is working perfectly. Obviously, nixos containers are in production ready. So you want to deploy to either uh, real hardware or virtual machines. 
Uh, you have there are plenty of tools that allow you to do that. For example, NixOS rebuild is now Flake aware, so you can pass it the Flake argument just as you can to NixOS container. Uh, also at Circle, we have been developing our own deploy system, uh, which is just called Deploy, uh, quite unimaginatively, and it uses a deploy argument, the deploy output of a Flake to determine where and what it needs to deploy. You can read more uh, about it here. And you can also use pretty much any deployment tool you have been using previously by just building the NixOS configuration manually and then passing that uh, pre-built NixOS configuration to your deploy tool. I, while I, I have been experimenting with flakes, I have read some of Nix's source. And uh, so I have found some features which are rather poorly documented or not documented at all or are otherwise not obvious, at least to me. Uh, if you want to override dependency of a dependency, you can use the you can use slash. So, for example, to override the hello, oops, this is a mistake. If you want to override the hello uh, dependency of uh, this hello intro flake, you can pass uh, nix a flag of override inputs hello slash nix packages and then pass it some flake reference. So, for example, this is a local nix packages checkout. If you want to update all dependencies to of some flake to latest versions, you can use a recreate log file. Uh, actually, all Nix commands accept this. Uh, this will just delete the old log file, download everything from scratch, and create a new log file. If you want to forcefully refetch uh, the latest version of a flake, for example, if you're using Nix shell, uh, Nix will cache uh, that. Uh, if you're using Nix shell with a remote flake reference, Nix will actually cache it. And so if you want to make sure you're using the latest version and not the cached one, you can run Nix flake update then uh, the flake reference, and uh, Nix will ref refetch that flake. And finally, if you don't want to write the built-in map patterns thing every time uh, you are um, writing a flake, you can use the very awesome flake utils, uh, flake by numtide. And so that about wraps it up. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, if you have any questions, I guess there is no time left, unfortunately, because I was too And uh, you, can, um, you can ask me questions, uh, I guess, on Matrix or on IRC. I uh, one second here. Um, I think you actually will have time for a Q and A portion. We decided that you can. Um, let me check with the chat really quick. Yes, you have time for questions for sure. So we're gonna give you the full Q and A. Wow, that's that's awesome. Thank you. Uh, okay, let me forward you the first question if you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so we have um, Farleon said, "What's the most challenging part about using Flakes right now?" And another bullet is, if you could change one thing, what would it be? So I think you can answer the first one, I mean the second one. Uh, yeah, the first one is that the most challenging part is I think that uh, as with most things in Nix, the documentation is, uh, well, it's there, but it's not complete. And uh, another problem, I guess, is that flakes are, and the unstable Nix is quite, not quite unstable, actually. So uh, before, in August, I've had, in, and in September, I've had quite a, a lot of issues with Nix, which I had to somehow mitigate myself. Uh, but uh, now uh, the documentation actually improved a bit because uh, there are more and more articles on flakes pub uh, being published. And um, also Nix is, unstable Nix is a lot more uh, stable now. And actually, all of our uh, I, uh, all of our team at Seracel are mostly switching to unstable Nix now. So uh, I guess a lot of the challenges are going away. And if I would change one thing, it, it would be um, well, my suggestion, which I'm currently working on, actually, uh, it's that um, I would create a plugin that allowed uh, uh, built-ins fetch tarball and built-ins fetch git inside Nix Flakes to work without uh, hash or uh, git revision, but um, uh, so that they would uh, lock their versions in flag, lock the versions of uh, what they're fetching in flag.lock. Uh, it's a bit hard to explain, I guess, but I hope uh, to have a PR ready uh, soon, or well, maybe not soon, I don't know. It's qu quite a hard task. Okay, I have another question, for, um, several questions actually from Rissen. The first one is, I have found that substituting um, inputs isn't recursive. Do you know if that is intended? Uh, well, actually, uh, I don't know if that's intended, but I think uh, this should actually answer your uh, question. So you can use this slash syntax. You can actually also use it, uh, if you know a bit more about flakes, you can actually also use it in, um, 
Oh no, actually disregard. Uh, um, I see he has uh, a couple other bullets I think that I can share. So he extends the question a little bit. So it also says, to extend on my question, let's say I want to use Flake B. Flake B uses Flake C and substitutes its next packages. Now I'm using, now I am in Flake A and substituting Flake B's next packages as my own. Then lastly, Flake B, Flake B next packages get substituted, but Flake C's next packages say the same as the origin Flake B's next packages. I hope you can understand that. Uh, yeah, I can understand that you can you can uh, do some clever things with uh, follows uh, to mitigate this. So basically, if you oh, that's a very good question. It's very hard to explain without writing some code. But it's you can uh, substitute uh, those uh, inputs recursively. Actually, it's possible. Uh, we we have faced this once, and uh, there is a solution. But it's quite hard. Oh, to explain. Uh... Okay, I'm, you probably can go into the breakout room and maybe um, Rissing can be there and you can talk yeah. about it. Yeah, that um, would be, I think, yeah. So let me see if there's any other questions. And if there's not, then I will just sign off. Um, okay, I don't think there's any other questions. Thank you so much. We um, made the last minute decision to extend yours to the, um, all the way to have the extra time we have. And I think that was um, a good use of time since this talk will probably be really popular for people since Nix is a hot topic to um, at least know about since, as you mentioned, the situation of the documentation. So thank you excellently. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Yep. And if everyone could please, please, I will beg you to put those claps, put those ones, put whatever to say thank you because in person, you can't actually, you'll be able to hear the clapping, but you know, here we cannot hear, so just show the love.